Hello again. Okay, this video is about uh, Jacob and Azu being of the same race and color. Now, firstly, why would I make a video about this? A certain portion of my subscribers are from a group in the United States. Uh, they call themselves Black Israel. And Black Israel, uh, some of the main points of what they believe and who they are uh, have pertained to Jacob and Izu. And they believe that Jacob and Izu came out as two different races, the white people and the black people. And they believe that they, uh, black Israel, were taken, in, taken into slavery in Africa and taken to the United States as a part of God's judgment upon the people of Israel. And therefore that is their connection to being the nation of Israel. And so that just sort of explains to everybody else uh, what this video is even about and why I'm making it. So Having said that, let's get into the video itself. Now, during my studies on Hebrew, I ran into uh, a verse that just kind of hit me that actually proves that Jacob and Izu are of the exact same race. They are not two different races. And so let's get into it. Now, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help uh, this channel keep going. Okay, so we're going to start here at Genesis 25, 25. Okay, this is about the uh, birth of Jacob and Izu. And the Lord said unto her, the mother, Two nations are in your womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from your bowels. The one shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Izu. And after that his brother came out. And his hand took hold of Izu's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about what color Jacob was. Just the fact that he grabbed Izu's heel. So our concern here is the red. We're going to the Hebrew language here. Right there. Vayetze Harishon Admani Kalio All Ad, he was all admoni. Admoni, red. There's the word admoni. It means red. We're going the Strong's numbers. <clears throat> Ruddy, red. Um, an adjective, red, ruddy. Avizu as a newborn babe. Uh, Jesenius, Hebrew lexicon. Admoni, adjective, red, red haired. So let's go forward a bit here to Genesis 2530. And Izu said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. Vayomer Esav, that's, and he said, Izu, to Yaakov, to Jacob, Haleitini na. Feed me, please, from, min, ha'adom, 
האדום הזה. Red, this red, red, this. Feed me from, okay, please. This is feed me, feed me, please. The red, the red, the red, the red, this. Because, faint. I am faint. And therefore his name was called Adom. Because he said, so he doesn't say red pottage here. He says, feed me please from the red, the red, this, or this red, this red. And that's why he was calling red for red for red. And that's why they called him red. <laughs> so it was just a, a, it was sort of a play on his nickname, was a play on the fact that he was red anyway. He came out red. And that he was crying for the red soup. The red, the red. So now let's fast forward. So Edom is Edom. And that other word that means red. Now Adom is not the same as Adom. Ha is the. Ha Adom, the red, maybe up here, the red, ha, particle, definite article, Adom, ha Adom, ha Adom. See, these are all related words, of course, they're all from the same root, it's just playing on the word. Okay, now the thing is, is, is Jacob the same color as Izu? Well, we know that Jacob had 12 sons who became the nation of Israel. And one of those sons was called Judah. And David was from the tribe of Judah. And David was the king of Judah and the king of Israel. 1 Samuel 16:12 And this is when Samuel came to anoint David as king or as future king, right? And Samuel said to Jesse, "Are here all your children?" And he said, "There remains yet the youngest, and behold, he keeps the sheep." And Samuel said unto Jesse, "Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes." And he sent him and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. Okay. Vayishle, they sent. Vayibi Echu, and they brought him. Vehi, him. And he, and he, Vahu, Adomni. The exact same word that they used for Izu when he was born. And he was Adomni. He was red. Let's take a look. Strong's number, red, ready, same, same word. And this appears in a few places, three places actually, this word. It was Izu came out red. And David, he was red. And First Samuel seventeen, forty-two. And when the Philistine, this is when David was fighting Goliath, the Philistine. 
And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy. So he was not a baby, he was a young man, or a teenager, or young lad. He was a young lad, Na'ar, and Adomni. And Adomni, exact same word again, which, which was used for Izu when he was born. Red. He was a young man, and he was red. And he was very handsome. Go here, Strong's number, same word, red, ruddy. And there's the three places you'll find it. When Izu was born, when David was anointed, and when David fought Goliath. They were all red and all ruddy. That means uh, to me that they were the same race. Because they had the same mother, same grandmother, right? So there, uh, there's your proof. Same race. So this proves that Jacob and Izu were both red by nature or by race. Now what kind of red does that mean? Does that mean red like a Scotman? Or does that mean red like a Native American? Red Indians? Red white men? And you know... Um, when Native, uh, Native Americans um, have mixed marriages with whites, uh, a lot of times the, the child comes out red, like a Scottish type of red, redhead, because there's a, a, red, a red in Native American. Um, and it's also in the Scottish. It's, it's sort of in different races in that way. So, now what kind of red was Izu and Jacob? Uh, who knows, if some other kind of red could have been mixed in long, long ago. Um, th there's no pure sons of Izu or Jacob left. They've, they've mixed in with uh, different nations around that area for a couple thousands of years. Um, <clears throat> but the important thing is not their race. Now, just because you're not a certain race, it doesn't mean you have no access to God. And it doesn't mean that you can't have the best access to God. Because God was never really about race. He, he used race in the beginning uh, with Israel as a way to establish his name and his, his um, heart among the nations of the world. And God, um, even with the nation of Israel, he didn't choose all of them just because they were a certain race. He always chose by the heart and not by the, the, the flesh. And uh, that is, the gospel of Jesus Christ is, is wholly based upon the heart and not the flesh. So now we'll go through a few scriptures just to show that this concept has been true always. That God always looks at the heart and not only at the flesh. Now he will judge nations, of course, and he will judge uh groups of people but he also judges the individual and um, Israel his beloved people are more about people of a certain heart and you will see this over and over again in the scriptures so let's take a look at some of these scriptures Okay, here's the first scripture we're going to look at. This is when Samuel came to anoint David, right? And he said, Peaceably I am come to the sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. 
And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab, the oldest son, and he said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance, how he looks, or his stature, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Okay? So, the outward appearance is race, and your stature, and your countenance, uh, how big you are, what color you are. That's all outward appearance. The Lord looks on the heart. He judges by the heart. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 66. Thus says the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build to me? And where is the place of my rest? Now this is Isaiah speaking. So that when Isaiah is saying this, the, the first temple is still standing. So he's saying, Where is the house you will make for me? So he's He's not, he's, he's not recognizing the temple as his house here. For all those things my hand has made, and all those things have been, says the Lord. But to this man I will look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembles at my word. So there it is also. It's again about the heart. He looks to the heart. Okay, so here's John chapter 3, and, uh, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be, be lifted up. This is Jesus talking to Nicodemus. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. So it's fear, uh, fear that his deeds will be made manifest. But that's part of coming to the light, is you just come and, and you are exposed, and God will expose to you your faults, and then you get to work on them. Lots of fun. So, what is what's he here saying up here? Okay. So, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, or teacher, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say to you, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Okay, so flesh does not inherit the kingdom of God. Spirit does. Here's Colossians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul. 
For this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. The flesh is evil. So that you cannot do the things that you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of which I tell you before, as I was also told you in time past, that they which do th such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay? So is there anything there about your color of your skin? No, it's about the things that you do and what's in your heart. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts, we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and envying one another. So there you are, it's about the Spirit, it's not about the flesh. Okay, and now here in Revelation chapter 20, this is like the end of the end. Uh, the second coming of Christ, right? And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, nor his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were, fr were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So there's going to be a second resurrection and then a second death which would be the, the, the final destruction of all evil and all evil people. They're being sorted out, being um, winnowed like wheat. Okay, so what is it about these people that says anything about race? That they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and they did not bow down to the beast. Okay? So where is that? A, where is there anything about skin color in here? Nothing. You see? So we, should, we shouldn't get ourselves caught up in the flesh and in this world. We look to the world above. We look to... Um, things that are beyond the flesh. We're look, we look to the heart like God does. God looks at the heart, not the flesh. So, all you have to do is in your own home in your own privacy, in your own closet, you can just humble yourself and ask God to help you and tell God that you wish Him to give you a clean heart. And He will do that. And that is a very scary prayer to pray because that's going to change your life. And it's not always easy either. And there's going to be people that are against you. When, you. when you change your life, your friends don't like it. It's uh, very often times. So, that's all I got to say about that. Okay, that concludes the video for today. 
Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think of all of that. Um, there are a lot of people in this world, in, especially Jews and some other people like Black Israel, who look to their race and their birthright. Uh, they talk about the birthright. And they think because of uh, what race they were born into that somehow God will respect that. And the Bible is very clear. He's, he looks at the heart and not at the flesh. He doesn't look at the appearance. He looks at what you're actually made of. And that's about the heart. So, um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week.